Let's recording. Yeah. If I were you, if I were you, if I were you, the show starts now. There we go. That was awful. That was the first, that's the way it's going to start. The first episode ever. That was great. That was, I rehearsed that for a year. <laughs> Before we even thought of the podcast, I was rehearsing that. Well, the name of the show is If I Were You. And um, yeah, this is the first episode. We're not always going to have Jake do the intro music. We Though just, we should. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just haven't thought of intro music yet. And we wanted to get the show on as fast as possible. So yeah, for now we're going to be, uh, I'll be trying out a different intro song every single week until you guys hate me enough that you can, someone can send in a song that we can use instead. That's right. So this is the first and only advice podcast on the internet. From us. Hosted by us. Yeah, exactly right. Um, I'm Amir. And I'm Jake. And we are... This Amir and Jake. <laughs> <laughs> and our names go in no other order. Um... So the goal of the show is to take user-submitted life conundrums and sticky situations and offer our advice. Right, however um, qualified we are to give it. Which is not very. The thing is, we're not really experts in any other field, so we figured a fun theme would be to maximize the fact that we don't know what we're talking about. Right, which is also why we called the show If I Were You. So, like, this is just stupid advice that I would follow. Yeah, this is... Uh, not professional advice that you should follow. We can't be wrong, because it's it's just If I Were You, right? It's right. Like, we can't... We're not after offering facts. It's just our opinions. How can my opinion on something be wrong? It's me. Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess let's start with the first question. Do let's, you have it? Yes, I do. Our first question comes oh, in from... Order to, let's keep it anonymous. Right. I was almost going to just reveal this person's true identity <laughs> and embarrass them. Oh, you can email us at if I were you show at gmail.com. Right, with your own personal uh, problems and conundrums, and uh, we will give you advice. That's right. But we'll totally keep it anonymous so you don't have to worry. And we'll do that by just making up a name and location for every person who emails in. Right. This first one comes from somebody named... Tram Hamburger. Awesome. Tram Hamburger. She must from, be German. <laughs> she's, where do you want to say she's from? Um, I think it's a male. He's from, okay. Um, Costa Mesa, Alaska. All right. Tram Hamburger from Costa Mesa, Mesa, Alaska writes, I have a huge crush on my barista. How do I ask her for her number without seeming like a total creep? Also, I want to be able to go to this Starbucks again. Is barista Starbucks specific? I actually, I don't think so. I think barista is like anybody that works with coffee, I think. Well, this is, we've already proven that we shouldn't <laughs> be giving anybody advice. We don't know what baristas are. All right. So, uh, have you ever had a crush on a barista? And not been able, oh, are you talking to me? Yeah, yeah. I thought we were talking to the, uh, the radio world. <laughs> have you ever had a crush on a barista? <laughs> it's a commercial. This song's for you. <laughs> if I were you, if I were you, if I were you. All right. Um, I actually... Yeah, I've had a crush on two different baristas. One, one like, well, I guess I still have a crush on one of them. Uh, there's uh, well, this one that I used to live at near in L.A. I shouldn't even talk about this. <laughs> what if she's listening? Well, if she's listening, we've Sienna, done a, I miss I've, you. <laughs> we've done a great job at marketing this. <laughs> it's playing in her Starbucks somehow right now. She's oh. running out to the street. <laughs> so this CD is filled with Nora Jones songs and a random <laughs> podcast we found. Uh, yeah, so I have had a crush on a barista, but I, I did not get her number. So I shouldn't even be giving... If I were you, I would do absolutely nothing <laughs> and just uh, talk about it to my friends. Well, I guess you're, you're sort of a regular at Starbucks more than anybody else I know. You try to go every day. I do. I try to go at, to Starbucks every single day. And you have no shame in that. Like, there's a lot of, like, uh, coffee right. hipsters and people, like, coffee snobs, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I say, I could, I really do. I love coffee. I just like it to taste like a, like, chocolate milk or something. I just like, <laughs> so you don't like coffee. Sweet. I love the taste of the sugar in the coffee. That's <laughs> what I like. And I like the way it wakes me up. I like having a routine. And I mean, oh, geez. This is a, Starbucks gave us a lot of money for this podcast. <laughs> All of these questions are Starbucks Starbucks related. <laughs> Next question. How do I get that sweet, sweet, refreshing flavor every morning? It's easy. <laughs> Hop into a local Starbucks. Why doesn't Starbucks have a size bigger than a Trenta? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> is that the biggest size? I think that I think that's what it's called. There's they like just came out with it last year, maybe or a few years ago. It's a, there's like tall grande venti trenta, and it's like a trent is like a double venti. It's so huge. It's the comical equivalent large. of a big gulp. <laughs> it really is. Of Why? Coffee. Why do you ever need a trenta, dude? Sometimes you just have those mornings. This all sounds like these all sound like names we'll make up on the podcast. <laughs> trenta from. Walla Walla, Florida writes. Um, all right, so you have a huge crush on your barista. You want to get a you... number without seeming like a total creep. That is a hard proposition because all they do is ask you for your order and then ask you for your name. Right. Like I want, I would like a, uh, a grande sweetened iced coffee and uh, to spend the rest of my life with you. <laughs> I'd love a Trente anything and a grande life with you. My <laughs> I, name? I promise you it will be quite grande. <laughs> My name is also my phone number. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Maybe you have to give her your phone number. Or give your email instead of your name. Right. That's that's a pretty nice little idea. So what's that? What's the person's made-up name? Tram Hamburger? Tram Hamburger. So she'd be like, oh, what's your name? And you say tramhamburger at gmail.com. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's yeah. very subtle, very sexy. <laughs> and then she just writes it down and gives it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> the guy making the coffee starts emailing you. <laughs> No. Um, God. Do we yeah. give advice yet? Uh, Do we have. I mean, that's writing your email address is a pretty solid. It's pretty cute of advice. I think you have to just be like. I mean, this isn't necessarily if I were you advice, but this is if I like really had a crush on her. I think I would just. You have to just be 100% honest. You have to just go for it. Yeah, but you never actually do that in real life. Right. That's true. Like, hey. You're really cute. I, yeah. I would love, I'd feel stupid if I didn't get your number. Yeah, it's so easy to say that you will do that and right. say, like, what's the worst that can happen? I, like, I'm afraid to ask girls for the number, like, if I'm talking to them and it's going insanely well. Yeah, like, and you'll never see them again. Right, just, like, we're hitting, totally hitting it off. Like, all right, yeah, we should, I'm going to go. We should hang, hang out or get a drink sometime. I, I don't know. We'll <laughs> run into each other. Bye. <laughs> well, yeah, what is, that's so funny. Like, what's the worst that can happen? Like, she would actually get offended or angry or hurt you in some way. Right. She throws hot coffee in your face. <laughs> Excuse me. No, you cannot have my number. And in I... fact, this is going to be a, a shaming of you now. Now you get burned. <laughs> Take your pants off. <laughs> but like, how do you go back into a Starbucks after she says, she's like, no, nah, I'm okay. Like, I don't want to give you my number. And then you have to like show up the next of day. Of course, of course. And I'll just have my uh, triple caramel macchiato and... um. Actually, you know what? Slit my throat. Can you slit my throat for me? <laughs> I'm obviously too much of a pussy to do anything ever again, so I'd like you to do that me that one favor. A Trent, a Trente ice water and uh, <laughs> punch me in the eye. Because you've already punched me in the heart. A Trente ice water. <laughs> you got to get a Trente ice water sometimes. <laughs> I just have to cool off. <laughs> no, no, no! I need a bigger cup of iced water. It's all, <laughs> it's all free. God, killing yourself in a Starbucks what a sad way to the go. The saddest eulogy ever. Uh, Jake Hurwitz was a, um, he was a good man. A con- no, no, no. <laughs> he killed you himself. All, you guys saw he killed himself in a Starbucks, <laughs> right? That that rabbi has the hardest job ever. That happened, right? Like, I wasn't just imagining it. Should anybody? Should any of you guys even be here? Why are you mourning him? <laughs> He couldn't get a number at a Starbucks, and he asked for a knife and then slit his throat. <laughs> Can you freaking believe it? I guess he heard it on some sort of podcast or some shit. If I were you, I would ask for her number, and if you don't get it, uh, publicly kill yourself at Starbucks. <laughs> oh, God. You awful human. Jesus Christ, don't do that. The, a- email, the email thing. I think that's the, way, that's the way to go. I'll give him more conservative advice, and uh, don't do anything, because... You want to go to the Starbucks again. You don't want to embarrass yourself. Right. So. Isn't, I think that is actually really good advice because isn't that like you don't really want her number in to like take her out on a date. You like you get up every morning. You're like, I'm going to go see Sienna at the Starbucks. That was the name yeah. of my Starbucks crush. I'm and like, Sienna. Yeah. That's what I used to call it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you don't you know, you don't want to ruin that. Keep that like that's the best part of of any relationship like this glorious little beginning having a crush don't ruin it keep that's, on going to starbucks keep on seeing sienna yeah that's really lovely but also incredibly depressing like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the greatest part of your relationship is the part before it even began <laughs> that's where i'm at right now all right uh, i'll read the next question cool this one is from 
trod cheeseburger at no um girl 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 stinned girl stinned den at, girl stinned den from miami of delaware writes <laughs> my girlfriend and i was invited to a fancy dinner by my boss and his wife it's we're invited but that's fine we right. won't make fun of every type of so sick yeah feel free to submit as you were we want to say yes but we can't afford it do you think we will pay or they will pay do they expect us to pay how do I go about asking them? Wow, that's just a poorly constructed email. <laughs> he, was, he was frantically writing it while his boss was asking him. It was for... in a cab on the way to the dinner. <laughs> please, please. Oh, shit, we was just invited to a fancy dinner. And do they expect us to pay? How do we go about this? <laughs> please record and upload the podcast. We are inching up to the ballet right now. In the bathroom during it. an 18 course tasting. <laughs> Trente ice waters all around <laughs> on me. You guys get the food. I get the water. We just finished our second bottle of a very expensive red wine, and I fear I may be, may be in the hole for this dinner as I'm buzzed and offered to pay for the entire thing. I've already put my credit card and demanded that I pay for it, so I'm worried that he'll take me up on it. I think I just bought the restaurant. <laughs> uh, so what would you do if your boss... Uh, if, I, if I was invited to a fancy dinner? Yeah, if you was invited, what would you do? Uh, I guess you have to say yes, because it's like a, a good way to get in uh, with your superior. Right. And I, I mean, I don't want to give the advice about lying, but you could always just like say yes, go, forget your wallet. Your boss, obviously, he'll cover it. And then you say, oh, I'll get you back. And then you just avoid him for the rest of your life. <laughs> because that's the beautiful part of your job is the part before your boss hates you. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the best part. So, gosh, what, yeah, what would I do? I guess I would, oh, you know what you could do is um, offer to choose, like, a less expensive restaurant. So email them back and be like, wow, that place is awesome, but I don't know if I can afford it. Can we eat at a cheaper place? Yeah, that's nice. That's, I think that's the way to go. That's honest. It's enthusiastic. It's saying, yes, like, you want to do it. It's not like I don't want to have dinner with you and your wife. It's like... I just want to go somewhere that's affordable for everybody. That's right. And then he'll respond and be like, nonsense. We're eating at the fancy place. Not, and you're fired. <laughs> you're going to be fired at the end of it. Me, and then- my wife, and your boyfriend are having a menage a trois, and you'll be eating at McDonald's. <laughs> uh, it's his girlfriend, but yeah. Shoot. The, the joke still stands. The menage a trois is still happening. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Um, that's pretty sound advice, actually. I'm pretty proud of, of, us your, of myself. Yeah, I'm I feel happy, happy of, of myself. myself. <laughs> uh, should we move on? Yeah, let's do it. This uh, this next question comes from uh, Tammany Jenkins. I went to high school with her. Tammany Jenkins from uh, from Sarajevo, Colorado. Sarajevo, Colorado. <laughs> She writes, my best friend wants to work at my company, and my boss emailed me to ask me for a recommendation. I love her, but I, don't know she, but I know she will be an awful employee. Do I tell the truth and have her not get the job, or should I be a good friend and recommend her? That's a conundrum. Yeah, that's a good one. And I- that is, do 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 <laughs> We're stumped. Moving on. <laughs> we get one pass a show, and uh, this one is more than it. In fact... Let's pass on the next couple because they are also quite hard. That is perfect. Let's go back to the barista one <laughs> since uh, that one was uh, easy. Somewhat solvable for us. And the show is over. <laughs> we have been stumped and we are done. The 14-minute mark marks the end of the podcast run. <laughs> um, Not the end of this episode, but the end of everything. <laughs> Clearly, we were in way, way, way over our heads. We thought we could give advice, but we suck. <laughs> my best friend wants to work at a company, and my boss emailed me to ask for a recommendation. I love her. And I know she'll be an awful employee. So, would you, t- would you? Can you imagine being best friends with someone who would be an awful employee? <laughs> like, I wouldn't be friends someone like that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you? Okay, are you saying just yeah, just staring daggers right now in the mirror? I'm just glad that you think we're best friends. Oh, cool. Uh, I think, you know, I I kind of think I would just have to tell the truth, and I would I would say. You know, you could, number one, tell your friend that, uh, you know, I don't think this job is right for you. You might be able to tell her why. Yeah, this this job isn't right for you. I think it's, like, more geared towards a competent human being, <laughs> and you are not that. Or you could, you know, you could just tell your boss the truth and not tell your friend the truth. 
but in like the in order to serve the greater good, which is preserving your friendship at the cost of your best friend's career. So there's a way to instead of like being damned if you do and damned if you don't, you're saying there's a way to like conserve your job and also your friendship by lying to the girl and telling her not to apply. Right, but you've told the boss the truth. I think that sort of cancels it out. Just so you tell the boss the truth and lie to your friend. One truth, one lie. Yeah. <laughs> You're back at neutral. You're still getting into heaven. <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> heaven is God tallying up all the truths and lies you told. You're like, hey, um, ooh. You're one under par. Uh, 200,000 truths and 200,001 lies. <laughs> so uh, to hell with you. <laughs> to hell with you. <laughs> that, that would be the saddest thing to hear God say. <laughs> You're just getting over like the the awe that he exists. Why is God the one doing the math? God, Does, he's got to Doesn't be. he have an angel in charge of that? No, no. It's just that all God is is just letting you into the <laughs> playground of heaven. <laughs> but there, there should at least be like a Jewish angel in charge of tabulating the score. That's true. That's true. Or it might be the devil. Maybe it's a devil thing. To heaven with you. Oh, if that's you have nice. enough, enough truths. So you're saying lie to the boss. Or well, tell the truth to the boss, lie to the friend. I think also, before you do anything, why don't you sit down for a long time and try to think of like why you think your friend would be bad at this job. And maybe there's like a chance that you could guide her, be sort of a mentor to her. And uh, you know, then it could be a great thing. It's like you're, you work with your best friend and she's really excelling at this company. And you know, the two of you can work well together. Nah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kill next. yourself at a Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's how all of our advice ends. What about what's your advice? If, what if you were Tammany? Um, I think I would lie to my friend and say that I told my boss. I would be like, told him, oh, you didn't get the job. You know what it is. It's probably like a lot of it is like a bureaucracy and uh, red tape. And uh, I assume if your friend is as incompetent as you say she is, she won't even know what that means, and you'll yeah, be off scot red, free. Sorry, you know, red tape, and yeah. then she just can find another job. <laughs> Perhaps at a red tape factory. <laughs> um, all right, next question. We are chugging right along. Yeah. Let's take a break. Let's take a breather. Let's take a little breather. We're going to try to release this podcast once a week. That's once right. Once every Monday for... You know, 30 to 45 minutes of advice. Um, I think that's a pretty good total running time. We don't want to, like, overboard people. Some of my favorite podcasts are very long, but they can get a little bit too long. That's right. So if you have uh, conundrums, questions, if you want some life advice, the email is ifiwereyoushow at gmail.com. You can write us in and uh, let us know what you're struggling with. Yeah, and you can you can include a fake name too if you don't trust us to come up with one for you. As good as Tammany Jenkins or what was the, yours? Um, I already forget. Something Den. <laughs> Tram Hamburger, I think, was one of Tram them. Tram Hamburger was one. Then there was Sheridan's Den, Den, or something like that. And the questions, I guess, the better the questions have the. Better questions have more details is what I'm trying to say. That's true. You think we should edit this podcast or just leave everything in? Um, you know, let's just, I like the idea of just leaving everything in. Natural. Yeah. Like when we were nervous at the beginning, just leave it in because it might be like charming. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm, I'm not nervous at all. Yeah, me now, neither. Because now I know it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> is there a Starbucks nearby? <laughs> Uh, that's gonna be. I hope that's a theme from like in, someday we're on like episode one thousand. We're still talking about killing ourselves at a Starbucks in the this, future when Starbucks no longer exists. No, I want to be, be broadcasting it, it live from a Starbucks. Sienna <laughs> just sitting on my lap. I can't believe you ever thought that this wouldn't work out. That you liked just having a crush on me. Like, well, now I love you. Now you're carrying my son. Uh, a boy can dream. <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> All right. Two questions left. Let's try to get to them. We'll right. Ch- I guess, I get, mm, should we say that there's five epi- five questions per show or just see how long it takes us I to guess get let's, through in half let's, an hour? Some will have more and some will have less. Yeah, that's what I'm for. Because like, it'd be kind of fun to spend one episode doing like just a ton of advice for one problem. And then right. on, the, on the other hand, it'd be kind of fun to do like, you know, rapid fire, just like lightning rounds. Lightning rounds. Yeah, that's fun. All right. Next question is: I live with three dudes. Who's it from? Oh, um, QD Zeb. <laughs> QD Zeb. 
<laughs> Clearly not a Martian. Uh, I live with three Earthlings, and we want to move to a cool carbon place. QD Zeb writes from Planet Earth, I swear to God. <laughs> we're just three normal carbon beings hanging out, eating human food. And we were wondering... <laughs> Listening to your Taylor Swift. Eat, seek, destroy, eat, seek, destroy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Listening to your tables. <laughs> So it's Q, QD Zeb. <laughs> QD Zeb writes, I live with three dudes, and we want to move to a place with just two of them. Do we just kick the third guy out or move to another place? We love our apartment. Help. Mm. Wow. So you, basically, QD has three roommates, two of which he enjoys. Yes. And I assume the other two roommates feel the same way. Basically, they three people dislike their fourth roommate. It's funny to listen to this question in the lens of he is the awful guy where like (laughs) his three friends hate him and he's like yeah two of us really want to move out and we don't like that third guy (laughs) he's writing this email while his other three roommates are moving out (laughs) (laughs) anyway we got this place filled with boxes and we just love it but this third guy is a real earthling (laughs) (laughs) he comes out of his room hey guys i emailed everybody on the podcast well no (laughs) I have a place to myself. This is amazing. (laughs) I guess if um, if I'm QD, if I'm Zeb, and I can't go back to my whole home planet, um, what you know, it's sort of can you afford the place without a without a fourth roommate? That'd be kind of dope. Kick that guy out. Now you have a home office. Are you waiting for an answer? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Zeb is on the line. (laughs) That'd be cool to have phone calls once in a while. That's we should do that. If somebody like writes in with a really cool question, we should be like, can we call you back when we're recording and you can explain it to us live? Oh, that's a great idea. There we go. Yeah, we'll have callers. Mm-hmm. And even if we have to call them, I want to like pretend like I just got a caller on a switchboard. Oh, yeah. Like, All right. QD Zeb, you are on the air. <laughs> You're live. Go. You're live. <laughs> You're live on this podcast that we may or may not edit. <laughs> um. So you're saying kick them out and try to afford the re- the rent increase. I don't know, I've never had this problem where I had where like I, I mean I've had roommates where I didn't want roommates anymore and then I just moved out on my own. So like I've never had, you know, two friends that I wanted to live with and a fourth guy we didn't like. Right. I guess if it were me, I'd just try to make that situation like really unlivable for the fourth roommate until he finally <laughs> just like up and was like, hey, all right, fuck you guys. You've been assholes for a very long time. I'm moving out. Just force him out. Kind of like when you're in a bad relationship, instead of breaking up with them, you just act like a terrible person until right. the other person breaks up with you. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's that's the move. This is the equivalent here. This is That's what's going to happen with me and Sienna eventually, <laughs> if everything goes according to plan. You're also going to get her to move out by leaving crumbs everywhere. <laughs> it's funny if you just like make the place disgustingly unlivable, but this fourth girl is like, all right, finally, we can hang out and have a good time. I was, worried party. You, I was worried you guys were like neat freaks. I thought you were a bunch of squares. I also like imagining this fourth roommate's like super nice. Like he's the, he's the cool one. The other guy's just like, yo, we want to leave this place a mess. We want to fucking stay up till 6 a.m. blasting music and shit. <laughs> Friends, if you wanted to, I could have gotten a studio, a pita tear somewhere in the city where I can spend my weekends. You didn't have to go through all this effort. <laughs> Just be honest with me. <laughs> Whoa, you have horns and antlers coming out of your forehead. So what would you do? Um, I think, uh, God, that is tough. I would probably uh, like have like a roommate meeting and be like, all right, guys, me and guy, cool guy one and cool guy two were talking about moving out. We don't want to like all move in together because we want like a smaller place. We still love you, Frank. I just hope you don't mind that like we're gonna have to live somewhere without you and move out and just like leave the apartment. Oh, and he, then he's like, he's gonna he, like, yeah. You basically say the apartment's disbanding. He has to find a new place, right? And then once he does, you say, oh, you know what? <laughs> I think like we're gonna renew the lease. <laughs> we actually weird shit is we changed our mind. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, Frank, you've already paid the broker's fee and signed a lease. You're kind of pot committed, as it were, to uh, getting the fuck out of here. Anyway, we will not help you move. <laughs> That's funny. It's like, all right, so we're all moving out tomorrow. Move out day. Yeah, you tomorrow have like a party, a goodbye party. Frank has all of his stuff in boxes and realizes you guys aren't going anywhere. Yeah, shoot. I think we we might just end up staying because this place is dope, right? <laughs> anyway, see ya. Door slams on face. <laughs> Um, wow, we're almost out of time, but 
We have one more question to get to. One we kind of timed it question. out very well. How, what t- what's our time right now? 25 minutes. That's really nice. A nice little 25-minute podcast. Let's end it right now, actually. No, 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 no. We okay, still have one more. 25 is the perfect length. Bye. Uh, <laughs> my mom painted me. Oh, who's, who wrote this? This one is from uh, Boxalina Jarface. Hmm. Okay. There's not a box or a jar on this table, I promise you. <laughs> There's both. Uh, my mom painted me a gift for Mother's Day. I just had my first child. Ooh, there's a little Jarlena in the house. Ooh. A painting of me holding my infant daughter, which seems nice, but it's really ugly. Do I need to hang it up? Wow. That is, that's a conundrum. Yeah. I like this question because it, like all four, five of these questions sort of represented the cross section of advice, uh, characteristics, question quality. Yeah. See, this is something that I would edit out, but I won't. <laughs> all five I am of these. talking with no end in sight. <clears throat> Someone and stop me. There's no uh, period coming anytime soon. So I think, um, oh, what I was saying is that it's good that like, we got like a family question in, a romance question in, a friendship question yeah, in, a professional question. Everything sort of, you we know. ran the gamut. Exactly. And so don't feel uh, embarrassed or shy to ask us or email us any type of question. And uh, if it's not good enough, we just won't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, you cannot. It's, it's that easy. <laughs> if I were you, show at gmail.com. If I were you, show at gmail.com. Should I play the song again? No, we'll play it one more time at the end. Okay, That's like cool. an outro song. Oh, very nice. That'll be the last time you ever play it. If anybody wants to play it at home, I believe the chords are C, F, C, G. So Write it down. Yep. And my mom painted me a gift for Mother's Day, and I just had my first child. A painting of me holding my infant daughter, which seems really nice, but it's really ugly. Do I need to hang it up? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. I mean, if I were you, I would have never had a child. Number one, that's your <laughs> I'm first. I'm just not mistake. ready for it. <laughs> uh, I, I guess um, I would probably, you know, you just ha- you have paint like things hung up in your house. I would probably just hang it up when your mom was coming over. Is it like I? Oh, uh, that's good. That's it. Just like keep it in the closet most of the time, and then uh, when your mom's gonna come over, just. Take down some other painting, hang yeah. it up. The second worst painting, you take it down, you switch it up. But what if, like, the one time she comes over, right? She like pops in, right? Right. I guess that's that's the that's the problem. If she if you don't, I if you like don't know when your mom's gonna be there or not, right? Or you just like you <clears throat> post a picture on Facebook in your house and your mom just comments, <laughs> um, "Where's my painting?" <laughs> Dislike button. So, I think I would put it up in a place that you can't really see. Yeah, but the mom's going to see that. She's going to know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. I think when you paint a painting for someone, you're, like, very aware of where it's hung. <laughs> That's funny. Just, like, leave it, it. Hang it up, but still two inches above the ground. So it looks like it's just resting. <laughs> Facing in the, the other way. <laughs> I want the wall to see it. You know what's a good little spot for it? Be, like, behind a door that you leave open a lot. But then, like, oh. it's, it seems like it's sort of, like, a like prime location near near a door. But then, like, the open door usually blocks it or something. <laughs> That's right. And then if the mom's like, why don't you put it in a more prominent place? You can Fuck say, you, mom. Your painting it's, sucks. It's an ugly gift. That's <laughs> why. Or just have your infant daughter, like, spill something on it or, like, tear oh, it down. Just, like, she'll never it. suspect the infant daughter. And she can't get mad at it. She'll be like... Oh, that's ironic, because it's you holding the thing that destroyed my painting. Yeah, it's kind of a fun story. Isn't that nice? <laughs> that's what you're giving her for Mother's Day. You oh. should ask your dad for advice, because he probably has to deal with your mom's stupid art all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Their apartment is awful. It's just chalk brim filled with <laughs> terrible paintings. Your dad is paintings. just like, you know what? Just just go with it, okay? <laughs> it's your mother. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> and you came out. I mean, it was just... Uh, smoking a fake cigarette. <laughs> no, it's a real cigarette. Oh, shit. Um, all right. That's five good questions. Five amazingly hilarious answers. Right. That. What else do you need? I guess nothing. Delete all your other podcasts. <laughs> Unfollow every podcast. It's us or nobody. No, no. That's a terrible message. You can listen to other podcasts, but thanks so much for listening to ours. Uh, we wanted to say thanks to SoundCloud for hosting our podcast. They're an amazing service. And they do awesome stuff. They make it possible for people to listen to our podcasts online. Yes, so thank, thank you. you, SoundCloud. Thanks to my brother Ben for making that cool icon, the art that you see when you're listening to the right the cover art. Check yeah. that out. It looks like we're it. we're like part of a hip folk duo, which 
is why we are playing this folksy song. And uh, until next week, thanks so much for listening. Uh, we hope you come back. We yes. feel like I feel like a lot of people will listen to the first podcast and then it'll slowly dwindle and then plateau at the amount of people that will actually be listening to the podcast right so until if, it's zero and we're just killing ourselves in a starbucks <laughs> and that's that'll be our last episode all right remember to write in if i were you show at gmail.com that's right all right play us out if i were you if i were you if i were you worst the show yeah what, what, what happened there <laughs> dot com oh we do have a website if i were you show dot com that's perfect. The show. Dot com. See you, everyone. <laughs>